In the fact, a follow-up segment tonight, last night we interviewed a Mark a Potak from the Southern Poverty Law Center, and he spotlighted a right-wing group called the Oath Keepers that he feels may become dangerous. But the reality about the group is that what it's really about uh, is the fear that martial law is about to be imposed, that Americans are about to be herded into concentration camps, that foreign troops are going to be put down on American soil. Joining us now from Washington, Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, who served as a paratrooper in the Army. Tell us about your group, first of all, before we get into the ideology of it. How many people are in the Oath Keepers, and do you have to be a, a police officer, uh, a law enforcement officer, and an ex-military? What do you have to be? Well, if you're going to be a full member, you have to be either current service or prior service, uh, military, police, or firefighters. Uh, but we also let average citizens come in as associate members to support our mission. And we have about 15,000 on our forum. About 15,000 on our forums. They're not all actual members, about 6,000 dues paying members. Okay, how much is the dues to get in there? Just a $30 donation. This covers the cost of processing the paperwork. You bet. And you've, you started this about a year ago. Um, are you associated with the Tea Party at, at any level? Well, I've been to a lot of Tea Party events. We've spoken at quite a few of them, and I'm on the planning committee for the one on 9-11 this next September, so the march on dc.org. But, um, you know, we like the Tea Party movement. I think it's great. It's a good revitalization of core Americanism and, and, and core constitutionalism. Okay, so full members in the Oath Keepers have to have a military or police background. Now, I'm going to read you something from your or website. Firefighters. Or firefighters. We will not obey unconstitutional and thus illegal and immoral orders, such as orders to disarm the American people or place them under martial law. Well, who's going to try to disarm people and place them under martial law? I mean, why would that even be something you would be discussing? Well, it happened as recently as Katrina. You probably have seen the videos there of an old lady being tackled in her kitchen and disarmed of her revolver, and there was house-to-house -house, uh, searches for firearms. And you had the, the um, police chief declaring that no one would be allowed to have weapons or to take all the guns. And they did. So they disarmed Americans over some bad weather, as though the bad weather suspended the Second Amendment. So that's, that's the most recent um, example. All right, but it was a little bit more than that. Happens. I mean, the local authorities in New Orleans could not control what was going on in the city. And you had looters who were armed uh, going in and stealing things. And, and this directive was... It wasn't just looters um, they were disarming. They disarmed average American people, just average American No, they had disarmed everybody. They basically said, there's not going to yeah. be uh, any guns in the city, and we're going to take them all because we're in a state of emergency. But that's after a hurricane wipes out the city, so I'm not sure. But let me ask you this. Where's that Say in the Constitution that says that bad weather suspends the Constitution? It's not a matter of bad weather. It's a matter of can't control the city. If a, a mayor of a city, if a mayor of a city or a governor of a state has a state of emergency, all right? And you hear that all the time. We're going to put a state of emergency here. And we have a city that's out of control like we had in the 60s, and you remember some of those riots, I'm sure. And they say, you know, we're going to pour as a curfew. Um, you can't go out after 11 o'clock. You, you can't have a gun out in public. You can't do this. You can't assemble. And, you know, because we have a, a out of control situation, you're telling me that you're going to tell your people not to obey those laws? I would, I would say that disarming an average uh, law-abiding citizen um, blanket like that. No state of emergency. Not, I'm just saying, I'm just talking state of okay, emergency. Okay, so you say call it state of emergency. Call it what you want. It's still unconstitutional. That's a pretty extreme position. All right, let me, uh, let me ask you okay. about this. You also say, um, we are in a battle for the hearts and minds of our troops. What does that mean? That means that there is a, um, there is a, a, a thought in, some, in the minds of some in the military that their oath is just to the president, and they don't understand that their oath is first and foremost to the Constitution. And so we have to make sure they understand that. Because well, the, but unlike the, but the, Germany, where, I mean, the commander in chief in, in is Germany, the president. And, and it, all right, listen. Commander in chief is the, okay. is the president by our Constitution. Mm -hmm. If he issues an order, are you telling people not to obey the order if they don't like it? If it's unconstitutional, yes. The, the in oath whose is opinion, to the, the individual soldier. It, so each soldier makes up his mind whether the order he's given is constitutional or not? What were the Nazis told at Nuremberg? That disobeying orders was no excuse, no defense. They have an individual obligation. And this is well established in, in military law. Okay. There's an individual obligation. There is, there is a, order a I know military law, and there, there are things in there that if a guy says you have to kill those civilians, you say, no, we don't. 
But I'm saying in a general exactly. term, I don't think you can have a military or a police force if you have each officer and soldier and marine saying, we'll obey what order we want because we don't think it's constitutional. That seems to be what you're putting out there. I'll give you the last word on it. No, here's, here's the thing, Bill, is that there's a presumption that orders are lawful. And so it's a, it's a heavy burden to me. But if, if you obey a, an unlawful order, you can also be in trouble. And so they're not going to just go do this lightly. They'll do it when it's most serious because it is serious repercussions if you disobey a lawful order. But you can be All tried right. and convicted for, disobeying, for obeying an unlawful one, too. If it's like clearly unlawful, I got it. But it, but if it's a matter of interpretation, and you could have anarchy easily. But Mr. Rose, we appreciate you. No, you'll, you'll have you'll have guys who'll be at risk of court martial. They're not going to do that because they're at risk of court martial. All right. They'll only All do right. it when it's really serious.